After my last Espresso Anatomy video highlighting the Slayer shot, Blooming Espresso was highly requested in the comment section. Now the concept of Blooming Coffee isn't some kind of new, out-of-the-box foreign idea. It's been a steady part of filter coffee recipes for years now, from the nerdiest home baristas all the way to the programmed commercial brewers. Yet the idea of Blooming Espresso, that one just is a bit more fringe, even though it's very similar in terms of design and desired outcome, like creating a more even extraction and removal of that sour CO2. But it's a bit more complicated in terms of practice, and I know what you're thinking, and this isn't it. What actually makes it more complicated is, for one, just standard espresso machine engineering, which I'll get more into that in a bit, but it also requires more control over pressure and flow, although that is becoming more and more common. Also, there's a little guesswork with a traditional machine, because you can only see what's happening on one side of the coffee. Yet when done properly, the general outcome, at least from what I've heard and read, is not only higher extractions up to 1 to 1.5%, but also a tastier shot of espresso, which is something we're all chasing. But there's only one way to find out, so let's brew some blooming espresso. As I dug around the internet looking for more info and recipes, the oldest and most in-depth references I could find about the shot are from Scott Rao who on his website back in 2018 wrote an article that I'll link down in the description all about blooming espresso and sharing the full profile chart from his decent. And the chart itself gives a full visual representation of all four of the shot's phases. Beginning with the 2-4 to four bar 25 second pre-infusion, aimed at wetting and heating the grinds, and if aligned properly you should begin to see a few drips as you enter the pause phase which is where the actual bloom is occurring, because inside the group the water is sitting on top of the puck or the grinds and continuing to saturate them for the full 30 seconds. Once that's done, there's a short 5 second ramp up to the final brew pressure as the shot reaches its planned yield, between a 1 to 2 and 1 to 3 ratio, and ending at a little over 1 minute. So with all these details in hand, this gave me a nice basic roadmap for achieving these shots while using the pressure profiling on my GS3 MP. Now, real quick, hold up their gym shoes before all the decent bros get their portafilters in a twist. The man himself even said it could be done with a machine like mine, but it just takes finesse. And we all know that I've got that shit in spades. And really, where most of the aforementioned finesse comes into play is during the pause phase. Because with most machines, when the pump is turned off, the discharge valve kicks on, and it dumps all the water from the group which could be detrimental to the extraction, because you're chucking out the brew water while also removing some of the heat. And even in some cases, it can actually unseat the puck. And then when you reapply pressure in the next phase, you could have a channeled mess. So after some trial and error with the GS3, I found that dropping to near zero will keep the pump on and the water flow blocked from entering the group, while also not triggering the discharge valve. This allows the full benefits of the bloom to take place before applying the pressure of the ramp up and flow phases. So now that we've gone through all the technical details of brewing Blooming Espresso, let's get into the whole reason we're talking about it and the whole reason it exists, and that is taste. As you'd expect, side by side with a more traditional espresso shot, i.e. one made with a straight 9 bar 25 second extraction, the Blooming Espresso was particularly smooth, with a very dense complex flavor and body. It leaned more towards sweetness and only produced some bitterness in the finish, but not unpleasant. 
On the other hand, the traditional shot, while still tasty and recognizable as using the same coffee, it had a lot more upfront acidity that flattened out the flavors into an overall thinner and less complex shot. And while looking beyond the cup profile, the extraction differences were also pretty significant. After brewing and testing 10 pulls of each, the results showed, as Scott mentioned, a boost of extraction from the bloom shots that in most cases met or exceeded 1.5% more than the traditional style. So this sort of leaves a lot of questions up in the air and left essentially to your own preferences and opinions. For one, if you look at a shot and judge its taste from how it looks as it extracts, blooming might not be for you. In my experience, it's not the prettiest, since blooming still erodes the puck, and when pressure comes back on, it runs a bit thinner and faster. I'm sure that many folks will say that 1-2% differences won't be something that most people can taste. But most importantly, at least in my opinion, I think that the cut profiles sort of speak for themselves, and show that in the end the numbers are more or less arbitrary, and what matters is what and how the same compounds in a coffee are extracted. Of course, you can also attribute some of these extraction and taste differences to contact time and grind size. Because blooming espresso not only allows you to grind finer, but is also about twice the brew time as a traditional shot. As I wrap this whole thing up, my takeaway from blooming espresso is a positive one. Just like when you bloom a pour over, the difference made in the cup in terms of flavor and extraction are hard to miss. Although there is a downside, and that is that there's a barrier for entry for producing the shot because you need a machine with a high level of control. And standard espresso machine engineering, particularly the discharge valve, can make things a little tougher, but not impossible. So don't let decent owners gatekeep this one. It's absolutely possible to pull off without one, it's just a matter of understanding your machine and how it works. That said, I think the real major benefit the Decent has in this case is its programmable consistency, instead of having to go in manually, shot after shot. So if your machine can mimic the chart from Scott's blog post, whether it be by pump or hand-driven, I highly recommend trying out Blooming Espresso for yourself. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on Blooming Espresso? Have you tried it? Do you think it's worth the time and the effort? And if you have any other recommendations of shot styles for me to try in future episodes of Espresso Anatomy, let me know those as well. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.